Ethan's crowd surfing, gliding on a sea of hands. Be there without being there. A summer of exclusive music coverage for all on BBC iPlayer and Sounds. Don't worry about a thing. The nation's watching. <laughs> Let's go. A new batch of celebrities are about oh. to feel the heat. <sighs> boy, oh boy. Fake it till you make it. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. I don't put my timer on. It's like leather boot laces. Shall I start again? Very impressive. That tastes good. Are you doing the dance to the Happy Judge? The <laughs> brand new series of Celebrity MasterChef starts Wednesday at 8 on BBC One and iPlayer. <laughs> Ten hungry cooks, one life changing prize. This is really good. Time with loved ones is all we've got. Look at the tiny little gamer. <laughs> Are you ready? to have the party to end all parties. New this summer on BBC iPlayer. Now on BBC One, the BBC News at six with Hugh Edwards. Today at six, the vast majority of dental practices in the UK are now refusing to accept new patients for NHS treatment. We talked to some of those in urgent need of NHS treatment, but the service just isn't available. My teeth are falling out. I need help. But every time I do, it's like, sorry, we're not taking on NHS patients anymore. Across the UK, nine out of 10 dental practices report that they are simply not in a position to take on any more NHS patients. The problem is that for most dentists, the service they want to offer their patients is not readily available if they continue and stay in the NHS. Yes, we'll have the latest on a comprehensive survey of dental practices conducted by the BBC. Also on the programme, following the anger over the strip searching of a teenage schoolgirl, it's revealed that hundreds of other children have been strip searched by the Metropolitan Police. Ryan Giggs, the former Manchester United star, attends court to deny a charge of coercive behaviour and assaulting his former girlfriend. And I'm here at Alexander Stadium in Birmingham, where the final day of the Commonwealth Games is due to end with a musical celebration of the city after England came second in the medal table with 57 golds. They included a spectacular performance by England's Noah Williams and 17-year-old Andrea spendalini Syriex in the diving mixed synchronised 10-metre platform final. Later on BBC London, a child is killed after an explosion at a house in Thornton Heath. Three others are injured and floods of up to four feet high as a water main bursts in North London. Welcome to BBC News at Six, and we start with the severe shortage of NHS dentists in the UK, with nine out of ten practices refusing to accept any new adult patients for health service treatment. Now, the British Dental Association says that NHS dentistry is at a tipping point. Now, the findings are from a comprehensive BBC survey of nearly 7,000 practices, which shows that some areas are deserts for NHS dental services. Now, of those that the BBC managed to talk to, 90%, as I said, said that they were no longer taking on any new adult patients. But 80% said they were no longer willing or able to accept children um, under 16 as NHS patients. And only a quarter said that they had a waiting list to become an NHS patient. And for most of those, that wait was for at least a year. Now, for the latest on the growing crisis in NHS dental care, this report by our health correspondent, Dominic Hughes. I haven't had a dentist for seven years and my teeth have been coming out. The voices of people who desperately need help, forced to take extraordinary measures. I make my own dentures at home every week. The NHS dentists who wonder how long they can carry on. It's the first time in a long, long time in my, in my professional career that I've ever had to turn people away. BBC research reveals the extent to which NHS dentistry is in crisis and the impact that's having on the lives of thousands of people. It's not like you have fillings or decay in the teeth themselves? No, my teeth 
are all relatively fine. It's all this mess is what is going on below the gum line. Terrible gum disease is wrecking Danielle's teeth. As her gums recede, teeth that were perfectly healthy start to become wobbly. Eventually, the teeth become so loose, Danielle can just pull them out. I'm 42 years old and I can't eat and I can't drink and I'm on painkillers every day. I'm not a 90-year-old woman. This shouldn't be happening to me now. Danielle lives in Bury St Edmunds in Suffolk and she can't find an NHS dentist who can help her. There are no dentists. I'd love to be able to ring a dentist up and say, my teeth are falling out, I need help. But every time I do, it's like, sorry, we're not taking on NHS patients anymore. The British Dental Association described towns like Bury St Edmunds as dental deserts. There are simply no dental practices in this area offering places to new NHS patients. And that is having a real and profound impact on the lives of many people. At this emergency clinic run by the University of Newcastle's That's dental school, me. dozens of people experiencing excruciating tooth pain have come for help. Definitely a good one for the tooth fairy, this, you know. Many of them share the same story. I phoned my dentist this morning at nine o'clock to get an appointment. They said I'd been deregistered and there was no emergencies left. It wasn't sort of aware they could just take you off the list. We're no longer taking NHS patients, we're only taking private patients. I can't say it was frustrating, I was absolutely foaming. Hello boys, dental surgery. But dentists themselves blame an NHS contract that dates back to 2006, which they say simply doesn't pay them properly for the work they do. Now see, it makes a little noise just like that. Ian is still seeing patients, but he says many of his colleagues are being driven out of NHS dentistry. They've been trying to hang on to a broken system for such a long time. The problem is that for most dentists, the service they want to offer their patients is not readily available if they continue and stay in the NHS. And there are warnings that time is running out. I think NHS dentistry is in significant trouble. Um, I think it's premature uh, to say we're witnessing the death of it, but in certain areas it's, it's on life support. There doesn't seem to be any real appetite for the sort of big structural uh, and investment decisions uh, that are required to fix NHS dentistry. I suspect we will continue to see a drift to the private sector. I'll measure them out. I'll help it. Caroline has been forced to take desperate measures. This is not pretty. There you go. That's the end. Crowns fitted on her teeth fell out. So, unable to access help, she uses modelling plastic to fashion her own dentures. Squeeze it into place and hope it fits and it looks better than nothing. It's not what I want to do, I'd rather have teeth, but it's better than going out with... It... I got it. It means I can smile at people a little bit from a distance and not look too freaky, rather than smile at people and go, eh, I hope, I think. There have been some small changes to the NHS contract for dentists in England and Wales and plans are being developed in Northern Ireland. But there's no quick fix for NHS dentistry and thousands of people will continue to struggle to access the care they need. Well, we will have uh, more from Dominic in just a second. But just to underline the scale of the problem, a quick look at the map here, which does really tell its own story. The darker the colour, the greater the problem. And look at all these dark areas. Uh, they are the areas with the highest proportion of dental practices not taking on any new adult patients on the NHS. And there's more detail wherever you live um, on the BBC website um, of the details in the individual regions here. So have a look at that and see how your own area is affected. Right, as promised, let's join Dominic in Salford. Um, the BDA, the British Dental Association, saying that NHS dentistry is at a tipping point, Dominic. Um, what's led to this now particular crunch? Well, Hugh, there's pretty broad agreement, I think, that this problem over access to dentistry dates back to that 2006 NHS contract. It was pretty unpopular when it was first introduced, certainly amongst 
dentists that contain these rather strange anomalies. Like, for example, a dentist would get paid the same for doing one filling as he did for 10. And you can see that that obviously isn't going to work for dentists. Then we had 2010 and austerity and budgets were squeezed and things seem to have got significantly worse since then. So NHS England were asked by the government in England to look again at that contract and particularly the issues around access. Now, similar plans are being considered in Wales and in Northern Ireland. In Scotland, where the system is different, the government says 95% of the population are registered with an NHS dentist. So, as I said in my piece, there have been some small changes made to that contract and it is early stages, it is an ongoing process, but crucially, so far in the proposals, there have been no announcements of extra funding for dentistry anywhere in the UK. And that raises this question about whether there is the political will to bring about the kind of fundamental reforms that will really fix NHS dentistry. We know that there are lots of people who have shown they are willing to pay for private care, but there are also many thousands of people for whom that is not an option, some of whom we've spoken to for our piece today, and for them, they still desperately need that care. Dominic, many thanks again. Uh, Dominic Hughes with that story for us there in Salford. And just to say that uh, you can see much more on the story and uh, the problems that have been raised. Uh, the documentary is called Disappearing Dentists. It's on the BBC iPlayer and it means that, of course, that you can access the uh, programme on the iPlayer uh, anytime you like.